results, unquote. Weird use of the word mainstream. Joining me now is Nick Ackerman, former assistant special Watergate prosecutor and a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. Thank you for being here, Nick. You know, this is so unusual. It's sui generis. There is, I can't even name the wife of, or spouse of any other Supreme Court justice uh, ever in history. Uh, this woman has been a longtime right-wing activist, and she seemed to have been actively involved, including emailing her husband's former clerk, John Eastman. What do you make of all of it, and, and what do you think the probative value of talking to her might have been? Well, it's hard to say what the probative value is going to be. I mean, my big question is, you know, who asked her to call these legislators in uh, Wisconsin and Arizona to get them to basically vote in these fake Trump electors? Um, you know, that's my big question. I mean, that's the part that is really concerning. I mean, she could not have done that on her own. It's hard to believe that she was acting as a free agent there. Uh, and the other big concern, obviously, is that she's a wife of a Supreme Court justice. And Clarence Thomas, while she was doing all this, uh, he was the one dissenting vote when the January 6th committee was trying to get all of Trump's records um, from the White House that were at the archives. Uh, and he was the only one that dissented. And then when Pennsylvania... Um, tried to, the Republicans tried to appeal um, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, which gave an extra three days to count votes. Not a big deal, considering the circumstances. Uh, he went on and wrote this dissent that basically banned, um, you know, absentee ballots, uh, and and basically came up with this idea that there's a more more chances for fraud with absentee ballots than regular voting. All of which is absolutely crazy, but it's the same thing that she's been espousing. So you've got a real conflict of interest here. It, it's just very unusual. I can't remember any situation in the court uh, where a spouse has taken a political view that is basically right on the money with her husband, and they both claim they never talk about this stuff, which right. I find completely absurd. And I'll note that uh, Chairman Thompson did say that she was a witness. They weren't accusing her of anything. Um, they would include something. If, it was, if there's something of merit, they'll include it in the next hearing. That's the notes from uh, Chairman Benny Thomas. But she, well, you just named the, the, the less cuckoo things that she was doing. Here are some of the things that she was texting to the chief of staff, to the president, Mark Meadows. This is two days after the election. Quote, Biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators are being arrested and detained for ballot fraud right now in over coming days and will be living in barges off Gitmo to face military tribunals for sedition. This person is a conspiracy theorist. She, she doesn't seem to be wrapped too tight um, when it comes to her versions of reality. Is it possible that somebody like a John Eastman would collaborate with a Supreme Court justice's wife? To what end? It, do you think that this could have been because they thought that eventually the election might end up in the Supreme Court? End up in front of the Supreme Court? Well, I think they were certainly trying to do that. They were trying to get it into the courts, even though every single court, including the Supreme Court, knocked them down. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, at she probably had a fairly close relationship with Eastman beforehand. I mean, the judges always have yearly events with their clerks. The clerks yeah. that are clerk for somebody in the past, they always keep in touch with their judge. Um, and I'm sure she met him in the course of that. I mean, the birds of a feather flock together. I mean, they're both crazy in that sense. So it doesn't surprise me that they would be feeding off each other. And it doesn't surprise me that they would be talking. I mean, the real question is, how much influence does she have on what Clarence Thomas is writing on the Supreme Court? And what was she doing talking to legislators uh, in this criminal conspiracy to try and get fake electors for Trump elected in Wisconsin and Arizona? That is the key question.